As you start thinking about deploying virtual machines into Azure, there's a few things that we want to take a look at. And the first thing is going to be that, in fact, it is considered an IaaS deployment model, infrastructure as a service deployment. And what that means is we're getting out of the business of having to worry about hardware, backup and redundant capabilities at our power supplies, at our NICs, at our um, disk environment. We're pushing that off onto somebody else but we are going to be responsible for managing the actual virtual machine itself from the operating system up. Now, there are certain ways that we can automate some of those things, but in general, it all falls on us. If I choose not to apply a patch to a virtual machine in an IaaS deployment model, that's my decision. That's my choice that I have the ability to make. Now, in addition to that, what you need to understand about them is that there really are pre-configured sizes in another video, we'll take a look at all of the different virtual machine sizes that are available. But what I mean by that is this. You do not have the ability to make a decision of, okay, what I want is a virtual machine that's going to have four cores. I want it to have you know 20 gigs of RAM. I want it to have 16 NICs. You can't make those decisions. You can't choose from column A, B, or C. There are pre-configured size virtual machines out there and you simply choose which size you want. So you may find yourself where you maybe only need two cores in a machine, but due to your desires to have a certain number of hard drives and our NICs associated with it, you may have to go to a slightly larger processing machine with maybe four cores to meet that goal. So just understand that you cannot modify or change what's available out there in those environments. Now, the maximum virtual hard drive size, the maximum VHD that we can actually connect to these is now up to four terabytes. So we can actually create a four terabyte VHD to attach to our virtual machines now for storing our applications and our data right in the environment. Notice it only supports VHD. It does not support VHDX, which are the new format of files that we have starting in server 2012 systems as well as VHDS or VHD set, which allows us to have shared virtual hard drives in a 2016 environment. Those are not supported in Azure at this time. So all of the virtual hard drives that we create in Azure will actually be VHD files. So just be aware of that. And it only supports generation one virtual machines. Starting with server 2012, we actually have Hyper-V supporting gen two virtual machines. Gen 2 virtual machines gives us, gives us a few new bells and whistles that are just not supported in Azure at this time. So all of our virtual machines are going to actually be Gen 1 virtual machines here in the environment. 